Well, welcome back, everybody, to Bravo Lebrity, where we're steeping in the drama of Bravo TV. I'm Kajal, here with Amy, and we're so excited because this time we're finally getting into Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, and of course, Real Housewives of Orange County. But I think this debut of Summer House so far yeah. has been amazing. Yeah, Martha's Vineyard. So basically, a couple of weeks ago, I had a friend come over and he wasn't really vibing the Vanderpump scene and I had already been caught up. So I told him I would watch whatever he wanted to watch. And he said, well, I want to watch Summer House Martha's Vineyard. And we sat there. And when I tell you I was hooked instantly, I didn't need to backtrack to the previous summer. It was so good. The characters, the characters, these are actual people. Um, I in a summer house, right? But they're so good. Aren't they interesting? They're so interesting. And I like that finally, it's like a friendship dynamic. Cause I mean, I feel like that's what made Vanderpump rules. Yeah. So like fun to watch is like, these were real friends. The fact mm -hmm. that these are real friends, these were women who all worked together at, it sounds like the playboy mansion before. And it's like them and all their friends getting together in this house together for the summer. So I'm like, cool friends, like real drama and so far they've been delivering on that drama and I feel like there's been like good drama between like a few people here and there that it's been it's been keeping it going there's also the Texas guy on there that I'm in love with Amir, Amir. And he's, he's from Austin. I love Amir he's so brilliant. I even told you Amir he knows he's beautiful he is a beautiful man yes Where is he? he said he was half Lebanese half yeah. black right and he's from well, for sure the Lebanese is all I heard. <laughs> You're like, ooh, exotic. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here with you because you oh, and he's also from Houston. Wait, but doesn't he live in Austin? Or does he live in Austin? He lives in Austin. Oh, he lives in Austin. Okay, okay, okay. I, I was got like, my oh. education with my friend that day. He literally sat there breaking down everyone. I was now, maybe I missed something while I was watching, but what's his connection to the friend group? On uh, that, I couldn't backtrack and tell you. I just know one of the friends brought him in, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's in love with Jordan. So, I which I'm sorry. They are beautiful. They would be so beautiful together. I, I just want to say that Jordan is a beautiful woman. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll get into a lot of the stuff that happened in this last episode. Yeah. Um, but I, I, Obviously, I want to start with Jasmine and Silas. Yes. Married and basically have the collective friends in the house. Exactly. They're the ones who invited everyone to this house for the summer. I guess they are they just got married. They just came back from their honeymoon, it sounds like. like. Newlyweds. But okay. I want to know because you were at one point newlywed. I want to know if you had to cook breakfast for Nate every day and how that went for you. No. Well, that's the thing. Even in when we were dating, I didn't have to do that because obviously we had this difficult shift. I mean, you know, from the work that we had. So it's like, I didn't really, and the weight of my husband's heart is not food. You yeah. know, that. Yeah. He's, he's such a picky eater. So no, honestly. But I isn't know. it a weird dynamic? I kind of feel like Silas is, is on vacation and Jasmine is not on vacation. Yes. I feel like she's on edge. Mm -hmm. I, th the, that's the immediate thought I, I got or the feeling I got when we first were introduced to her. And I'm like, girl, you're on vacation with your friends. Like it doesn't have to be like everything by the rule books. Just like, you know, like why is she so nervous? And we, we kind of start to see why later on. And it's, you know, it, it comes out that she was this party animal and somebody who loved to go out with her girlfriends. She loved to get drunk, loved to have fun. And now that she's married to this guy who kind of seems to like, you know, he likes to go to bed earlier and likes to wake up early. He has a, he has a routine. He likes to oh, he's big routine. on the routine. Yes. I love how he uses routine to cover up his misogynistic. Uh... Yes. The control. I, yes. that's where I'm trying to say, like he, I get such a controlling vibe from him and yeah, for you're right. Exactly. That's what he uses is a routine as his form. Yeah, I'm just used to it. I'm just used to it. Get exactly. on and on I'm vacation. like, dude, oh, you're man. on vacation. The weirdest thing. And then he gets mad. Oh, okay. So I'm going to get too far ahead of myself, but I, I know because early on Jasmine came in real hot about the whole couple thing. Yes. Kind of annoying with people when they get married. You never did that to us. So I appreciate that. Oh, uh, but I hate that about married people. We get it. You're married. 
Yeah, they make it about everyone else is a whore because they're not. Well, exactly. And it's like, okay, let everybody else live. Just because you're married doesn't mean like everybody else has to suddenly like, you know, (laughs) it's a different set of rules for you. I get it. It becomes a whole, like the bride becomes a whole personality and she came in real hot. And I do kind of feel as though she was covering up a lot of angst or anxiety that she had because people want to dress it up real well because man, he showed his true colors real quick. So quick. And then- I can't stand him. I'm going to tell you right now. I cannot stand this guy. Oh, I can't stand him already. I had boyfriends like that. So I think I'm triggered. Oh, I don't like him. I got triggered because I'm like, and I hate to say this. I mean, I'm, it's like the Middle Eastern men can be like that. And it's like, oh, yeah. I think we're both looking back at you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, culture trauma. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That, no, I think that's what it is. Like I've, I've experienced so much. He's still like that. Me and- <laughs> The whole breakfast thing is beyond, I mean, toddlers, well, maybe not toddlers. I don't know much about kids, guys, but you know, children, I know, I remember I was pouring myself a bowl of cereal. I'm so irritated with him and the way he is with her. What irritates me, I'm like, your wife is not your mother. Your wife is not your mother. Your wife is not your mother. Oh my goodness. I hate that. I hate that traditional mindset where it's like, once you become a wife, you are responsible for cooking, cleaning, doing the laundry. It's like, no, it's a 50, 50 effort. And if you haven't watched or harping on this, because he was really bad about it. Like he What's harped that? on everything. I mean, she burnt toast once and he was pissed. Oh my gosh. He made yeah. such a big deal about it. I'm like, like, there's not more bread. Oh, rolling my eyes. <laughs> I just or your own cereal. You'll be good. You'll be good. You're a grown man. Uh, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to cover. And I do suggest if you're not watching it to jump into that one. So Amir is uh, Bay. He's a Texas boy. I love me a Texas boy. I love me several Texas boys, but Amir is also a Southern gentleman. I love he he does. He is very polite and knows when to be quiet, when to speak. I, I kind of get a lot of those Southern vibes from him. Yeah. But yeah, you know, <laughs> He's getting a, flustered. Why are we getting flustered? I'm married. <laughs> I know he's not even sad. I know you need to calm down. You're also cuter than me. So no, Amir, I'm single. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very married, but he's a beautiful man. Um, I think it's, it's yeah. you can't lie about that. Um, Bria and okay. Bria, oh, I guess us. like if yeah. I would have gone there yeah. without my husband, I would have gone with my dog. And I feel like you would for sure <laughs> want to go with Ellie, right? Or Twilly or Cub. Wait, no, you if we're a- renting a house, I mean, I, I may not impose Cub and Twilly on you because they're assholes <laughs> and my dogs, but they're jerks. But, but Ellie 100% would be with me. Ellie could easily be your emotional support animal. Penny would be my emotion. She has been my emotional support animal. I, mean, I got here during the Great Depression in San Antonio that I experienced. And all of a sudden things are better. Exactly. But yeah, like- it I was such a funny dynamic to for her to show up. What is her dog's name? Do you remember? Milo. Milo. I think it's Milo, right? And I'm 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 almost positive that he's not trained to be an an uh what is it an ESA? A Milo. Yeah, definitely but not. I'm gonna that around real quick. Like he emotionally, Ellie emotionally supports me daily. Um, but he's been with her. He went into the house and immediately pissed off Jasmine. And Amir, I think Amir. No, wait. Why do I keep missing uh, mixing up Bo and with Silas? Yeah, with Silas. So yes, Silas and Jasmine were upset that they didn't get a heads up that the dog was coming. Which I I kind of get that. I would give my friends a heads up if I'm bringing my dog. But then again, part of me is also like, guys, <laughs> this is a reality show. Let's be honest. You don't own this house. Like productions everywhere. You don't have every room. Like, come on. I mean. What- Well, also you have to admit like Bria isn't coming with a lot of drama of her own. So maybe that mixed it up a little bit too, that she's like, I'll throw him a curveball. I'll bring myself a dog. I'm bringing my dog. And I'm going to say- He doesn't bother anyone. Like he he stays in the room. I don't know what he's supporting, but he stays in the a good little dog with the exception of him pooping on the pool table. (laughs) Yeah, but oh my gosh, dogs always have an at least one accident in a new place. It's just a new environment. It happens. You clean it up. You teach them that they have to go outside. And usually yeah. they stop. My dogs usually stop. But I, I'm, I'm a dog person. So I love seeing a house dog on a show. Personally, I'm here oh, for the sure. house dog. 
So, but you know what? That wasn't even the worst guess. <laughs> no. I my like my opinion is that little Milo was not the worst house guest. No. Wait, uh, who do you think is the worst so far? I'm trying to think because it's Nick. I think I love most of them. I'm not a fan of Nick. It's Summer that got kicked out. Is that the friend that just well, summer, summer, summer just jumped in. Summer's a new one, but there were two people that got kicked out in the same night. One, because he got physical. He like just showed up. He That's didn't right. even stay the night. Yeah. He didn't even stay the night. Yeah. And yeah, that got, was, yeah. that was a lot. But I think after, but after these two house guests got kicked out, Milo was good to go. He was yeah, fine. Exactly. Is he no problems? Silas forgot about Milo. Jasmine forgot about Milo. Milo has been no problem. Even, okay, even, I'm sorry, Bria's boyfriend has been no problem. Actually, he's been pretty good. I forget cool. Bria's boyfriend is there. He's, he's like funny. so chill. He's so, so chill. You're talking about Bria's boyfriend. Can we talk about something for a minute? Wait, yeah, yeah, say it. Uh, titties. <gasps> okay. And, and her titties. Okay. I had a problem. Okay, what did I... Part of me, I get Bria. I completely get where Bria's coming from. Oh, I do too. I mean, I gotta say, we have like a couple of nice sets of knockers. And she had really nice boobs. She had great. But I've I, like I've never been so brazen to just like, you know, I'm here. Oh, no, I know. And in front You're of in a home with of couples. Yes. I go back to Vanderpump when Lala did this, it was a little jarring to me. I was like, why are we doing this? Um, but even she looks back and regrets those things now. Yeah. You know, but Shanice is just like, these people are just trying to piss people off. <laughs> and Shanice knows everybody feels off with her. And so she's like, let's make them feel a little more awkward and just walk out topless on the balcony. <laughs> so you know how you can always like on Vanderpump, my moral compass is kind of Katie. Mm -hmm. She overreacts, yes. but she reacts to like what I would react to, you know, mm -hmm. maybe not as overtly as she does, but she's my moral compass. So Bria yeah. for this show is kind of my moral compass that, yes. that her temperament is pretty much my temperament. I, it might be yes. the dog. It's you calm. Know? She's not like, she's not loud. She's not in your face. So it's when she's offended, I know she's offended, like she's oh. offended. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so cool. I could appreciate her reaction to her. And I love that she called her out. I don't know that she ever said anything to her face about it. Mm -hmm. She was telling everyone yeah. that, she, like, that she did that. But a lot of people weren't phased by it. And then she did Wait, it. Silas not? I could swear I thought maybe. Silas in the mirror. Uh, um, Silas, like when the whole crew was outside after they got the table outside and they were having their dinner. Remember they oh. had like a picnic? Yes. She did that little number from the balcony again and Bria wasn't there. Right. She was in bed. What well, yeah. And it her was. man came and like told her about it. And I don't care how pissed I am at you. You will not keep me away from alcohol. <laughs> like there's no way I'm staying in bed because I'm that angry. Like I will snarl at you while I'm choking down a biscuit. Like I Amy, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, you're on a reality show. Get yeah. your ass downstairs. <laughs> this is the whole point. <laughs> Take Milo with you. <laughs> like Milo can sit on your lap or next to you while you're eating. Be your support. I mean, your boyfriend, your boyfriend went to the to the dinner. That was weird to me. I was like, why is your boyfriend only there and you're not? <laughs> And then titties show up on the balcony. Like, and then she's offended. I'm like, well, if you were there, maybe, I mean. No, she would have done it anyway, but at least this yeah. time. And I think that was the end of the she episode. Yeah, this time, that was the end of the episode. And now she's offending more than just Bria. She's offending the whole house. So that made me happy to see. <laughs> because that's Bria's, Bria's clutch. I like her. Yeah, I like Bria. There's a lot of people in here. I think that there's a lot of um they're they're touching a lot on a lot of things that I think are really important when it comes to sexualizing women. Yes. Um Jordan. Yes. Did you how did you, how did you feel about her reaction to um Alex's comments and the fact that she was upset that Amir didn't say anything? How did you feel about that? 
So two kind of parts, I completely agree with what she is saying. All the comments mm -hmm. that are made towards her just because she's posed for Playboy or just because she has posed, you know, maybe what some would say provocatively for social media, her social media that she gets paid mm -hmm. for. Um, I completely agreed with what she said. Alex, that was his name, right? Alex? Yeah, it's Alex. It's Alex. He, he kept saying some of these like out of pocket. I mean, just comments that would make random. me uncomfortable. Random, just out of nowhere. And it's like, wait, what? So she had mm. every right to say what she was saying. Now, I do think maybe she got a little heated and dragged Amir a little bit into it. I don't think Amir's comment was meant to be to sexualize her. He was just saying to the guys, like, I want to pursue her. I like her, you know, like, I, I want to see if she likes me back. Of course, it's her choice if she wants to date him or not. Um, But I think that's natural within guys and even within girls. Girls will always say, hey, I like this guy. I think I'm going to pursue him. So I, I get that. He and then her, yeah. Well, and then Amir leaving, I get why she wanted him there. And I completely agree with why she would want him to be there through a conversation like that. I think he left because he was like, what did I do? And I think it kind of, he was like, I need to step away, calm down for a second. I like that about him. He's not somebody who just reacts. He goes, he processes information. That's kind yeah. of how I'm feeling with him. And then he comes back and deals with it. Cause he still went and talked to her and kind of resolved the situation with her and with how she was feeling. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think? Okay. So I did appreciate that he left. Did not, did not. The mom and me came out. I did not appreciate the dish slamming. No, I do not appreciate that. Whoa, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, no, no, it no. Was, it was I don't like, like that. I don't like aggressive things. Like, I agree. It, it doesn't not do necessary. anything for me. And it kind of takes away from the nice guy vibe a little bit. But in yes. the heat of the moment, he was upset. He yes. That would, to me, was an overreaction, which was so slight. But yeah. she also, I think, overreacted in that she did drag Amir through the mud a little bit because mm -hmm. She knows how he feels about her and that he's trying to pursue something with her. Yeah. Uh, but Amir also tried to defend Alex's words and she would have never been at him. Yeah. So when that, that whole conversation started and Alex is very low key, just dropping down these stupid comments, which are so annoying. I see. He didn't she, say anything yeah. in those moments. Yeah. So she came at him right away and told her that he's always sexualizing her. He needs to stop that. Amir should have never opened his mouth. And she never got to tell him that. I wish she would have said, why are you even talking when I'm talking to him? Exactly. Don't, don't make excuses for people and their stupidity. Exactly. It would have, like, it would have been just him getting the heat. For sure. But I also like see how she in the moment probably it, Cause I will say when a, when a man kind of like sexualizes you, when it's unwanted, it kind of is shocking and almost like you're like, it's gross. It's so gross. You kind of like feel you, you start to second guess everything about yourself for a minute. You're like, wait, what did, what am I doing? Am I giving off an impression? Yeah. What am I wearing? Literally. That is my big natural boobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally why I got a reduction in the first place is because men. That's when I'm talking about you because it was this was a thing with you. Yeah, that it really was. You and you're not actually, like, you've never worked at Playboy. No, no, I am such a prude. <laughs> it's I so really weird. Water. It's people talk about their tits and it's gross when people sexualize you when it's unwanted and it's gross and it's uncomfortable. And it's like, I'm, I'm sure a man would feel uncomfortable. So it's just. Consent is open. Know. I'll let you know when I want to be sexualized. <laughs> exactly. I will let you know if I want you to sexualize. Me. <laughs> That's just my husband. <laughs> but yeah, that was just I I'm glad that was talked about and I'm but I'm so disappointed in Alex. I I don't like how defensive he gets. It kind of trigger it's, it's I don't know. It's annoying. Yeah, so I think I I actually think that there's more there with Alex and uh -huh. I'm not understanding it yet. But I have a really bad feeling about him. I know I do too. I just don't get good vibes. I can't shake it. Yeah. Sitting up thinking about these people at night, but <laughs> there's something weird about him. There's a, there's something a little off about Alex. I'm, I have a feeling there's more to Alex's story that we're going to maybe find out either through this season or potentially if he comes back next season. Cause I feel like he's either 
too quiet, you know, like he's not divulging a lot of information, but he makes a lot of comments that are kind of like, whoa, like yeah, weird, just unnecessary. Um, Nick, I'm sorry. I have, we have to. Okay. I have a crush on Nick. <laughs> he <laughs> irritates me. He has a I like friend. the attention of it all. He's such a fashion, like snob. Oh. He's beautiful. I think he's a, I love that about him. Have, have I not, I, I, I don't think I've been reading into the personality other than just how pretentious he is. And it just, I don't think he's a bother. Is he a bother? Has he said anything offensive that I'm missing? He has a girlfriend and he's been flirting with all these women. And do you remember, okay, he tried calling dibs on Jordan before Amir. Oh, so that I was confused about. We just found out like this last episode, or I, I did. I don't know if you all already knew, but that he had a girlfriend. Yes. And because he's bringing her to the house, I think, or yes. she's, she's trying to make it before the end of the trip. But let me tell you, like, if this is, I'm sorry, like, I'm sure you got yourself a good one, but this is men to me. I wasn't so oh, I oh, would. Friend. If you guys could see like the, the gestures I'm making, my husband would be missing things like <laughs> that would not fly with me. And oh my goodness. No. So he was, but, uh, but he would come on. Cause y'all, he wasn't going to get any play. No, of course not. <laughs> no, not gonna get any play. No, he wasn't going to get any play, but it was just like, I, in my mind, I'm like, what, what is this girl going to, if they're still together, I actually have no idea if they're still together or not. But if they're still together and she's- I want her to make it. I hope she does make it to the end, um, to I, the finale. I hope she makes it enough just to see this and be like, yeah, I want this confronted at the reunion. Um, I thought that's- I think it was that big. Man, you are missing the drama of Vanderpump. I could feel you like- Yeah, yeah. It's honestly the scandal in me. I think that's I what it's- <laughs> I'm like- the Drama. No, I think are not. Very me. They're so chill. The Bravo men- right now need to be careful <laughs> because yeah we Alex, are not for well, sure needs to be careful we're not dealing with any sort of cheating at the moment we no. are we are done right now we've had enough cheating nothing will be as big as scandal though nothing no, will be right now. So this is like an easy watch for me it's yes. easy drama i'm very invested in um silas and jasmine's relationship oh yeah and I think like the side characters have some things going on that are interesting. I love Preston. He just threw the pride part in party the other day. Oh, yes, I, I love his him. character. And I want to see his partner on the show. Yeah, he's just there. I love him. I love his character. He's so bubbly and bright and positive and we need that. And funny. Yeah. We need that humor. Um, you know what we haven't talked about? <laughs> what? Um jasmine and silas's love making so i okay so i got you to watch it you pervert you're such a fucking pervert. you i honestly watched it because I you're like the, job. the whole house is getting mad at them because they have such loud sex and i'm like i'm watching okay i'll go watch this is interesting <laughs> this is the kind of reality tv that makes it fun to watch so i went on and i like, yes, it's gross, but I cackle at these things because I'm like, y'all, this is so weird. You know you're being filmed. <laughs> like, All I see is ass. Like, And then you see the most- I have so many <laughs> questions. Like, yes, you're on camera, but you he's got to be so proud of that ass because that ass is like straight and really No covers over him. <sighs> like, be, be polite to me. I am watching and all I see is ass. And grinding. And can I, personal opinion, I cannot hear people have sex. Like, I can't either. It will die. It, it, it will, makes it me uncomfortable. Will. I get the chills. I get like uncomfortable chills. Yes. It, so how these people are pretending like it's okay because these married fucks are having sex next door. I would be so pissed. Like that is I not can't be okay. That is not good oh. No, I'd be so un like all I'm every time every time they cut to them having sex, I love how they pan to all the rooms and then them then just the noise and they're all just like looking around at the walls and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> the walls are shaking. It's disgusting. It's so oh, I hate it so much it's for so cringe. I, it's so cringy. It's so and cringy. I it's just so classless. 
for the two people who keep talking, I'm sorry, like about class and what's okay and what's not okay. Yeah. It's so off script and I, but people don't care when they're fucking like, they not. Don't care. no. And then I think that one episode where he was like, I can't do it because you're so quiet. Like, because she couldn't make noise, he couldn't get off. But like, I was like, oh, so this is a thing. This is a- this yes, is a and thing. I believe some women are like that. They're just loud because their man needs them to be loud. No, no. no. I, as a matter of fact, I want to say thank you to you because there was no sex noises in your house the night I spent the night. So I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, well, first I, nothing happened, but I would never want to make. I would be anybody. mortified. I mortified. If someone, I, oh, sorry, let's let's correct that. If someone I knew, of course, heard me having sex, I would be mortified. If you don't know me, I fucking don't care. Oh, like I'm not in the same house with you though. Like no. that's being rude. I would love for you to get laid as long as I'm not around. <laughs> I don't want to hear I that's what I'm saying that's crazy to me it's weird to me I don't get the people like okay the thing about Vanderpump Rules that always drove me wild is the stories that Jax Tom and Tom would talk about about like having sex with beds next to each other with like the sheet with just oh yeah even that I'm like I never had that either because see I had a roommate in college (gasps) literally we would always hear her again. Her room was right next to mine. And it was always like a different guy all the time. And it was just like, I hated it. I hated it. And I never felt safe. Cause I'm like, what if he, y'all are drunk first off. And he's really drunk. I don't think he comes and tries to fuck me. That's what I I literally lock the door. Cause I've seen enough. That's how you die. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I've I've never seen a dateline like that. I haven't, but I, (laughs) And but my, <laughs> my twisted head, it was going to happen that way. We, exactly. We're such on a tangent, but this is so true. This is so true. I've had the roommate situation where I didn't know her well enough. It, I met her on Craigslist. Red <laughs> I met her on Craigslist. I needed a place. So I was her roommate. And when she broke up with her boyfriend, oh, oh. I've never been more terrified in my life. Oh, She would go out on a Friday night come home with a guy, go out on a Saturday night, come home with a different guy. Yes. That's what my friend, uh, I was just so over her. Like no one is having those orgasms like that hard, that loud. Yes. Like, how insecure are these people that you're bringing home? Yes. Like, it's fucking rude. And when I left her, like when I left the residence, I told her mother, your daughter is disgusting <laughs> and I'm going to die. I am breaking the lease now. I swear to God, God. I watch too much yeah. dating. Don't get me started. Same. I gross. I mean, I okay, we think I was about, about to kill Jasmine, but y'all, that's gross. I even hate those noises coming from below deck. Oh yeah, below deck. That oh, yeah. And I'm like, do the guests? They always have to know? describe the smell for us on below deck. That could get so cringe. <laughs> oh okay so martha's vineyard the last episode is going to be this sunday right oh wow is it already at the we're already at the finale wow okay yeah i'm I'm excited to see what happens i'm Mm -hmm. excited to see how things go now with you know post jasmine's you know discussion essentially and like how she feels with Mm -hmm guys and kind of how they start treating her it's just it's going to be interesting to see how the summer closes out and going into the reunion because this is now the first reunion with this group so that'll be really fun to see yeah it's going to be a lot of fun and silas go get your life i can't stand that guy Honestly. he's so gross to me like i cannot stand the way he treats no. uh, and now yeah. we know that jasmine is kind of all shows like she's cracked she's she's showing her cracks now and wow. i just I don't like, I don't like marriages like that. I'm going to be honest. I, you I have to be yourself. Is forced to cater to someone. I, you know, I, you haven't I, even had a baby yet and you're already mothering someone. Yeah. Yes. So Real so, Housewives of Orange yeah. County. I'm so happy Tamara's back. I don't know about you, but last, I mean, last season I love Tamara. was so good. I love Tamara. Tamara brings the drama. Um, yeah. I don't understand fully the drama between her and Shannon Bedore. Honestly, I kind of think it's a little mm, put on for show, but I am on winded if you ask me, like, yeah. why are we so mad? And I feel like Shannon, 
I really like Shannon and I feel like she's changed so much since her first season on this show. She mm-hmm. is so much less uptight than she used to be. She is so much more like free spirited. And I feel like she has gone through so much trauma and hurt and I'm here for this. I don't know. I mean, yeah, she has. I can't of- stand <laughs> Shannon Bador. I, I, I hate her. her. I used because to hate I her. I don't remember the person she used to be. And I she know. was so annoying. She was. And I know, but lately I've loved seeing her grow. And I feel like she's so much, she's, she's so different than what she was when she first started. But yes, the way Shannon first started, I could not stand her, but I love this new Shannon and I love her friendship with Tamara. I think they're funny together. They're weird. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a minute though. Like I've only seen them fighting for the past few seasons. Oh, can we talk about the intro? How funny it was when she was like, the last time you saw me, I was in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> like she was drunk in a bush. Just I'm like, what are we I am going out, girl, same. <laughs> like you have to come back after that. What a way though, to come back and make up for that. I mean, it was not a horrible way to leave either. I thought it was still iconic and funny. Um, yeah. But it's just camera, like, no, like, okay, there's like Teresa's kind of freak outs, Teresa from New Jersey Housewives. Yeah. And then there's a Tamara freak out and it is next level. But I think both of those are like iconic, like the way that you set them off, they're gone. Like they're oh, yeah. just out of this world shouting. When something yeah. clicks and when- they're seeing red, they're seeing red. But I do have to say that Tamara is one of my favorite uh, all franchise characters. Yes. I love I've actually, when in the seasons that she wasn't in there, I kind of dipped out, um, but I love watching her. I, I love her storyline. I think she's grown so much. She's gone through a lot. Oh, yeah. And she's dealt with a lot with her kids. And then she found her. And we kind of doubted him for a minute, but that seems to be working out real well. Oh, I know. No, like I, it turned out to be a great thing for her. Such a great thing for her. And what's it's so funny because I'm rewatching Real Housewives of Orange County from the beginning because I've never seen it from the very first season. So like a lot of it was yeah. new for me. And I will say the show was very boring until Tamara came in because she's yeah got this personality that's perfect yeah. for reality yeah. TV. Mm-hmm. I mean, the show's. It, it, she knows how to bring the drama. She knows how to kind of like instigate. She kind of reminds me of Kyle Richards a little bit from Beverly Hills. Like she yeah. knows how to kind of instigate the fights, but like kind of, you know, <laughs> stand back and like, until it comes up to her. My favorite part though, of this last episode was when what Gina was about to talk to Tamara about mending things with Shannon and Shannon is just awkwardly. She's like, Oh, the food. And uh, that's what I hate about her. <laughs> That's why I can't stand Shannon. She is that friend that I would be like, cause y'all leave that bitch at home. She's fucking annoying. I would tell you her a second. She's like, they're having a serious conversation about adopting. Is that that part? No, No, Gina, we're talking about. This was at some, uh, wasn't it on the boat? Was it something, a yoga? No, 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 no. Yeah, it was some yoga thing that they were doing a workout thing. Okay, do you see how bad she is? She did this several times, though, because then they were on the boat and the new friend hopped on. And uh, was it Jennifer with all the kids? No, that's no. Yeah, it's Jennifer. Yeah, Jennifer, the new lady. Jennifer was on the boat talking about adopting. Right. Shannon looks over and she's like, is that so and so? Which she thought it was her boyfriend or her boyfriend's son. And she was like squirrel, like she was gone. She kept repeating it so annoyingly. Wait, is that him? Is that him? No one fucking knows who you're talking about. And we're having a serious conversation. Oh, she, like in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, that okay. like world stop. Her this social cues are off. She yeah. has like, that's what it is with Shannon. And it's get past quirky. No, no, no. And it's yeah. annoying. It's annoying. I will say there's a, there's many moments where I'm just like, I will agree like that moment. It's almost like, dude, shut up for a second. And like, yeah, there's, there's an important conversation being had, but mm-hmm. like that part when Gina was just trying to get Tamara to talk to Shannon and mend things with her. And Shannon's just standing right there. And Tamara just starts talking shit about Shannon. And Shannon's like, oh, is that about me? And then Tamara's face is like, 
I lived for that. Cause it's like, that is like, I really? have never been caught talking shit. I not that I, I don't do it often. I mean, it's not like I talk shit all the time, but like I did it once. I was tricked into it. Stop. <laughs> but imagine how it's it was one of our friends. It was one of our friends. Yes. I was tricked into it. Someone asked me a question that I shouldn't have answered. And our best friend came back to me afterwards and she was like, Did you say this? I was like, you know what? I did say that. I don't remember this. You have to tell me after this. All right, let's talk about my favorite housewife. You're gonna hate this probably ever is oh, Heather. God. Is Heather? I, I love her. I love her and her man. I think she's fabulous. I think she's beautiful. I do think she's beautiful. I love a pretentious person. Look, I, 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 I'm, I'm here for pretentious people. Like, and I will feed the pretension. Like, it's good for the show. I am, I'm there for it because I, then I get to wave my pretentious flag. I will say. I'm not, you'll be, I don't know if you're going to be surprised. I used to not, well, you're not going to be surprised. I used to not like Heather lately, the last few seasons. And I think this last season, since she made her return, I've really liked Heather. Mm -hmm. I've loved seeing her as a mom to, you know, LGBTQIA children and how she navigates that in a very conservative town, like Orange County. Um, And I do like her dynamic with her husband. Her husband's a little weird to me. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of her husband. I don't know why. Something about him annoys me. I think that's his point. He reminds me of a dude from, is it Family Guy? I think it's Family Guy. Yeah. I think he reminds me of some- Educational activities and viewing activities are coming out now. (laughs) I'm just saying. Family Guy? What is wrong with you? But he's so, something about him just, I don't know. I love Terry DeBro. Sorry. But I like Heather. I love Heather. I want to see her and Shannon get along. I I really want to see. I think her no, I don't think I want that to happen. Me too. I love watching Heather knock down Shannon every time. It I'm, makes me so happy. I hate Shannon. I know you hate Shannon. I am so here. I'm so here for, I guess. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, the minute they bring back Vicky, I'm going to hate that bitch too. I don't care for Vicky. You I don't like them. I don't like whining. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want Vicky to come back. I'm annoyed. Vicky's annoying. I just, everything about Vicky annoys me. I, I am annoyed of watching her right now in the early seasons. I remember watching her on the later seasons and she's an oh, old she's about to piss you off. Wait until like, she puts her daughter through the ringer. And I love that her daughter got her own like life going and just kind of left. Already overbearing mother. So I cannot imagine it about to get worse for her daughter, but it's yeah, be I'm not a big fan of Vicky. So I don't, and I don't care for her and Tamara's friendship. I'm here to see Tamara and Heather kind of. Yeah. Kind of finally, maybe put things aside and kind of become friends. And it seems like that's what's about to happen. And if they don't and bring the drama, we're still going to watch because that's I what we're here to watch. What about yeah. Gina? Like in the past few episodes, I feel like Gina was more my people. And well it just okay some of these people have more modest lifestyles that's what I'm talking about that she was just more modest lifestyle Gina ever wealthy though to begin with no offense I'm sure she's wealthier than I am going through it like there's always something happening like I just it was a divorce and then I I don't know I think no but even her coming onto the show I've never been a Gina fan and I yeah I just I can't I just feel like last season I was really annoyed with her I felt like she suddenly had like this like uppity kind oh, yeah, of yeah that was okay can we talk about something real quick real quick I'm laughing because Heather and that's why I like Heather she's so stupid I love Heather Heather was upset that Gina wasn't calling her because she didn't want to go anywhere Gina full well full and well like new she doesn't want to hang out at the dive bars I'm going to but yes I will call her to invite her it's decline the invitation yeah the first thing um where was it that they went that Gina invited Heather and Heather immediately talked shit oh <laughs> man now I'm forgetting what the event was but you're right she immediately did she immediately talked shit on that's my girl that's Heather that's, that's Heather. Heather that's Heather DeBro. that's what we love about her whatever I mean 
she's massively wealthy. She doesn't understand what it's like to be modest, humble, and poor. <laughs> she's got like rich auntie vibes though. I, I think I, I, I know people like that and I appreciate people like that because they are very generous. She is. She's, you can they tell are very generous. generous. Yeah. No, so for all sure. you gotta do is keep people like that in the loop and say, yeah, come on, exactly. come, come. Yeah, I'm bored. I, I don't, she's not giving me housewife. I'm not here for, I just, uh, Last year, I didn't like how she treated Shannon. I know you're not a fan of Shannon, but it's like Shannon was not horrible to her. And she, I feel like, found a new friend and was oh, like, she was just adopting some drama. Yeah. yeah. And I just was like, eh, it feels too manufactured. I just feel like you're trying too hard. And I, I want it to be less like obvious if you're going to try yeah. to manufacture drama. So, like, learn from Tamara. <laughs> so, I know that they do gang up on um, Shannon a lot. Yeah. yeah. And it's annoying. Oh, no, but no. I don't know. I think Miss Emily. I love Emily. I like Emily. I really like I'm Emily. Emily She's fun. fun. She's, real. She's fun. Yeah. And I like drunk Emily. Drunk Emily is really funny. <laughs> she is She's funny. such a hoot. I think drunk Emily is like us as happy drunks. Like, That's what I'm saying. We're so chill. Oh, we've had some good drunk moments. We have some. Um, yeah. We've got some, on camera. We've had some fun. We've ones. had some great drunk moments. Yes, we have. Well and... documented only on our phones. <laughs> yeah. Emily is not. I don't think she's embarrassed herself. She says some really crazy things, but she hasn't gone so far as embarrassing and herself. And I like seeing her. She's, she is like the epitome of a housewife and she's a lawyer. She's like a, she's a boss. Accomplished. She's a bomb ass. I mean, yeah. I'm her husband was like having a hard time passing the bar and she was like, come on, honey, you can do it. <laughs> like yeah. it was sad, but I mean, <laughs> glad he passed it finally. But like, yeah, I love a smart woman and she's like, love- at home doing her thing. But if, I think she's she's the mediator of the group that she yes. kind of just yeah. levels the playing field. But that last episode with them on the boat got a little, was that the last episode? That was the last episode. Yeah. This week is going to be a new episode. I don't remember what the coming up on was. I don't remember, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's, oh, it's going to be about, um, what's it called? Um, uh the oh the conversation between Tamara and Shannon remember they agreed to finally sit down and talk oh uh, yeah okay so, so we're yeah. finally gonna see something come of that like but I don't think anything's gonna come of it because I think they gave like yeah. we had like a mid seat or not a mid-season but like a season preview kind of and it doesn't look like things between Tamara and Shannon are gonna go well so there's gonna be a lot of drama this season that I'm yes. really looking forward to <laughs> They have a lot. Okay. So they have a lot at stake too, because there's been drama on jerseys, which we haven't, we have, we haven't done an episode on New Jersey housewives. No, uh, which we should probably do an episode on like the finales um, because we're just getting caught up on everything. But right. I think if this doesn't keep some sort of dramatic momentum, mm-hmm. it's going to be rough for the franchise. Oh, I think so too. I think yeah. So. Cause what I'm already talking? a little bored. Yeah. A lot of the friends I'm here for Tamara and I'm here for Heather. So I will be interested, but I I am a little bored. I'm not going to lie. There needs to be a mix up in a lot of the franchises. Like, I think some people have over, like, are just like, for example, they should not have brought back Gina. I feel like we could have used some, either some new blood that brought something. Yeah. Better drama to the table. Or mm-hmm. like, I mean, in, on Jersey, for example, I think we're all sick of the Melissa Teresa drama and it's sad. Yeah, it's it's yeah. depressing. That's a, that's a brother, sister mm-hmm. that are losing their relationship with each other over fame and a show. I mean, that's really what exactly. it's down to. So it's just, we need new stuff. I think we need new blood. We need fresh stuff. I need more drama like Miami. Miami is doing a freaking fantabulous job. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, have you watched Miami? I need to catch up. You, you and my mom are always like, watch Miami, watch Miami. And I, I, I got so behind that I cannot imagine diving in. Wait, so. you don't need to watch like the first seasons and stuff. Like just from like, I did watch the first couple of seasons, but there's okay. like seasons in between. And there's been some cheating scandals that have happened yes. in between as well. Like recently. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. We'll but- figure out like what we're going to tackle because there's so many shows. New York is going to happen. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I don't know anyone on that show either. <laughs> so I do appreciate the fresh, young, different. 
I think a lot of the younger people are problems I could relate to just because I don't have the kids. I don't have the husbands and the husbands, the husbands. I don't have all 10 of my husbands in my harem. It's fun finally seeing like a cast that's closer to all of our age groups and kind of seeing them in roles like there's influencers on there. There's like, these are women who are kind of, I feel like established within New York in a work setting. Then, And I think at the end of the day, a lot of these fat fights or a lot of these battles, people have to move on. We're sick of hearing about it. Yes. You know what I mean? So like you're saying about Teresa and Melissa, and their feud how are you not over it or how are you just not at least talking anymore like how has someone not made the decision to jump out of the show and just be healthy about it but we'll totally get into that later I am feeling the same way about Orange County though that I just I'm sick of some of these fights I am too I'm a little annoyed about some of these fights I know it's like it drags on too long and it's like, all right, I'm, I kind of like seeing when they start, when people who haven't been getting along, start getting along. For example, like when Melissa and Jennifer on Jersey were getting along, it was really refreshing when Tamara and Shannon get along or when Tamara and if Tamara and Heather get along, I feel like it, it's kind of refreshing sometimes to see, I don't know, less fighting, but mm-hmm. I mean, I know we're here for the fights. I know we're here for the drama, but some of it, it's just so repetitive. It's the same old shit over and over again. And sometimes we need something different. Yeah, I, I, I'm i here for the new people. I'm excited. There's going to be a lot to to watch. There is. There what is. are you going to make me watch? So we're going to um, do Miami. We're gonna I'm going to do-, do Miami. I, although I don't think a trailer has dropped yet for the new seasons. You should catch up on Miami. Okay. I not regret it. That'll be good. Well, that's awesome. going to be a wrap up. We did a little late recording this week because we had some things going on, but we are awesome. always happy to be here and recording this. this is, I get to see you once a week. This is a good little. It's so fun. And we get to talk about our favorite stuff. <laughs> and our moms listen. So, Winnie. Hi, moms. <laughs> Well, thank you for listening to Bravo Liberty, where we're spilling the tea on all things Bravo. And we will see you. No, we won't see you. You'll hear us next week. (laughs) Bye, guys.